Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today we're going to be doing a quick review on the $100 3D scanner, the Cyclops 3D. So let's get started. So this is the probably most affordable 3D scanner you can get that has a bed, laser cameras and all that stuff. You can actually 3D print the whole entire setup if you wanted to. I'll leave the link in the description below to where you can get it, but is it really worth getting? So without further ado, let's get into it. As far as the setup goes on this guy, uh, building it was really easy. I mean, there's not much parts to it. It took me about 20 minutes to put together, but aligning everything else was another story. Now it took me like over an hour just to align all the beams and the camera and all that stuff. And it was, it was a big mess, but it's really easy to put together. They have a video on how to do it. I'll leave that in the descriptions below as well. Once you're done putting it together, the first thing you need to do is align the system. The aligning part is, again, very self-explanatory. And I'll leave all the links to where you can get the software. Uh, they use Horse, I believe. That's the software name, but I'll leave a link for that as well. Now in this software, they have this little wizard and all you have to do is just basically follow the steps. Once you're done with that, it's pretty much set up other than the laser part. Now the laser part took me a very long time just to get everything aligned correctly between the two beams. It's, it was just a nightmare. I couldn't get them aligned. So I had the hardest time with that. I don't remember how much time I spent, two hours, maybe an hour, I don't know. The lasers took me a very long time to get aligned. And finally, when we are all done with spending a couple of hours on putting this together, this thing is very fragile. So any slight movement, if you decide to move this from your table and move it to another spot, you're gonna have to realign the whole system again because it's so fragile. It, one little move, the whole thing's out of alignment. So depending on where you wanna do it, make sure that's gonna be the permanent spot or you're gonna spend another hour just trying to realign everything. For my first test, I decided to go for a little toy like this. This is a very small Japanese toy that I could put down, but if you notice, it doesn't do black very well. As a matter of fact, anything that it detects as black, it will just automatically not detect it as anything. I mean, it absorbs the light, so it won't even, like the bed is black, so anything that's black just won't work. It won't, you know, take it in. So a couple of my toys have the black stuff in it, and I don't want to repair all that stuff, so I decided not to go with it. And instead, I decided to go with a little mushroom plush toy that I have that literally is not black. I mean, the eyeballs were black, but I erased the eyes, so it's going to work out perfectly. And like I said, I'm going to call it what it is. It's a mushroom, a happy mushroom. So now I place this little mushroom on top of the bed, and I have a little spot in the center where I know where the center is. So I just put that there. And since I had such a hard time aligning both the lasers, I decided to only use one laser. So here we go with the scan. And it ultimately takes about 10 minutes in general. You can actually speed it up or slow it down depending on the quality you want it as. So for a quick 3D print I'm gonna do, I just set it as medium and it took about 10 minutes to scan. Okay, now that everything's scanned into the system, we're gonna take those dots and basically turn it into a solid. The first program we're gonna be using is called Mesh Lab. I'm not 100% great with this. I just know how to turn a poly into a solid or points into solid, so there's a lot of fine tuning we could do with this, but for the meantime, it's gonna work. It's, it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna import a mesh, which is called right laser mushroom. I only use the right laser for this. And as you can see, it has the lines or the dots. And if I pull away, you can see it's like the actual object. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to filters and go over to normals, this right here, and then scroll down to here. Uh, compute normals for point set. Now in the normals number, I'm just gonna do 1000, hit apply, let that process. It doesn't take too long, but it's also gonna create, it, it doesn't look like it's gonna do anything, but it, it, it does. Once that's done, you're gonna close that out. And now um, we're gonna go over to filters, go over to remeshing, and go over to screen poison surface reconstruction. Poison, that's why it's called. Anyway, I'm gonna hit apply. Now by doing this, you see how it says stop right now. Uh, we're gonna have to wait until that says apply again, but it's gonna create a second layer. The first layer will still be your original. The second would be the actual solid itself. So uh, there's gonna be two layers you're gonna see on the top right. Uh, what do you call this, the project bar. All right, now that it's done, I'm gonna hit close. And you can see it's now more of like a solid, a black solid, but solid. So the mushroom is looking pretty good so far. And I'm just gonna delete the top layer, uh, delete current mesh. 
and I'm going to export this out as a STL on my mesh folder. So I'm just going to call this uh, mesh and I'm going to change this to STL. So we're not done here yet. We're actually going to need another software to actually close up the holes on the bottom and on the top. As you can see on this, there's like a hole on top. So what I'm going to do here is go over to this program called Mesh Mixer. It's from Autodesk and I think my Windows 10 shipped with it. I don't remember where I got it, but I just have it. I'm going to import my mesh and you're going to see uh, this takes a minute to import because it's such a big file. Oh, here you go. Wow. It looks like a really stressed out mushroom. <laughs> All right, uh, let's close up the bottom. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to hit edit and oh my God, <laughs> uh, a plain cut. And let's just uh, cut your bottom off like right about here. And once you hit accept, it's going to close off the bottom and we're going to have to close off the top too. And in order to do that, we're going to have to transform this and rotate this uh, 180 degrees. Uh, come on, 180. Why isn't it snapping? Should snap? Sure, 179.99. I think I can type this in. 180. There you go. I'm going to hit accept. Go over to plain cut and chop off the head i mean the top the hat the tip whatever you want to call it that looks pretty good i'm just going to accept that and then go to transform and basically rotate another 180 degrees i'm just going to type that in one eight zero there you go accept and there we have it it's closed up on the top closed up oh you can't really see it but closed up on the bottom now we have to do is just export this and throw it into our cura so we're going to be done mesh all right i'm going to pull up cura now so there's my cura i'm going to open up and do done mesh and dang that thing's 103 megabytes or 104 megabytes whatever that was it went by so quick it went from like 18 megabyte file to 100 megabyte file it might take a little bit to load on this all right so there we have it my little stressful mushroom. It's got those little red marks because those are like hard places to print, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to be using a 10% infill and a layer height 0.2. And let's bring this thing over to our printer. So guys, here it is. It, it looks very stressful. It feels very stressful, but the top is cut off. And here's a comparison next to each other. I, I think it works. I mean, for a plush toy like this with all this detail, sort of detail, um, it, it's actually not too bad. I mean, for 100 bucks, this isn't, I, I'm able to get something out of it. I mean, ultimately, I think this guy would be really good for parts. Like if you're doing car parts or something that's like rectangular or square or something like that, this guy could probably scan really well. But the mushroom's looking pretty good. Uh, <laughs> It's a little stressful, like I said, but it, it looks pretty good. So as far as the conclusion on this guy, uh, do I recommend it? I mean, if you really wanted a $100 3D scanner toy to kind of play around with, it works. I mean, I was able to get the scan in, 3D print it out. It, it does work. I mean, it, it probably would be better for, like, like I said, parts. Um, but yeah, ultimately, it works. It's not great, uh, but it works. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. Oh, did I also forget to mention, uh, I am starting my vlogs again. Uh, I know I took a hiatus off that. I just kind of stopped uploading on that channel. But... I will be uploading on that channel again, so I will leave a link in the description for that and also a card at the end so you could just check it out.